currently. So we have Beardbroken versus Akane in round three of winners. Beardbroken so far entirely undefeated, not dropping a single game, with, if you can imagine this, a five faction Nick Detraxian deck. So I'll pull that up for you right now so we can give it, give it a very quick look. It's basically a lot of very powerful value cards and then a lot of ramp. That's going to be the important thing. So like Devotee of Sands, Find the Way, Learned Herbalist, Trailmaker, Unfamiliar Interloper, Voice of the Speaker, Amber Acolyte. So lots of ways to like find power and ramp power. So we're going to see that out of Beard Broken here, the five faction Nikto deck. And then the other deck that we have is Akane Kiryu, who is going to be playing, uh, if I remember correctly, Ace Donis. So yeah, they're going to be playing a Skycrag spell list with a lot of dragons, mostly focused around Ace Donis Untainted, the 3-4 flying dragon that increases the damage of spells in your hand by 3 once it hits one time. Alright, so we are going to jump on into the matches here. And I will update the deck lists in the chat right now. And we'll watch this from Akane Kiryu's side. Oof. An unfortunate start and definitely going to have to be a mulligan. With both of our players, good luck. Yeah, this is a very nice hand. Good early start. That's probably what we're going to, again, see out of this, is that it's really about whether or not Akane has enough early game gas to get there. The Flyers are also going to be a problem. Like, Beardbroken's got Nick Detraxian's, obviously, his late game Flyers. But a lot of uh, the Nikto stuff is going to be early game uh, ramp that's going to be on the ground. So like we were saying, like the Trailmaker and Amber Acolyte and Seraph Grand Strategist to buy time. Like just a really big butt on something. And Akon and Kiryu's hand right now is a lot of pressure and some really powerful little flyers. Or at least one, for sure. We take what has to us. And Beard Broken starting out four colors on turn two. So nice start there. Also stopping this Teething Vault from getting in. Ooh, I... Kind of care you're going to kill the unit here. I like playing the Teething Vault to maybe get that down because then you can try and kill it next turn and maybe get in some damage. Get it to fly immediately, like if Beard Broken doesn't have a follow-up. It looks like they didn't, but we'll have to see what happens. So here comes the Teething Whelp onto the board. And I mean, Beard Broken can have anything now. Beard Broken's power just working out perfectly for them. We've seen a lot of people have power problems, but Nick Detraxian 5 colors seems to have very consistent power. And part of that is Beard Broken's list, right? Like, Beard Broken has had... Uh, creation Chant, Destruction Chant, Tradition Chant, Seek Power, Find the Way, Learned Herbalist, Trailmaker, Unfamiliar Interloper, Amber Acolyte, like, Bulbous Humbug. Like, over and over and over the again, they have approaches. fixing, 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 fixing. It's just a common theme throughout their deck, for sure. And it's served Beard Broken really well, we've seen it. And this is a nice spot now for Akane. Actually getting in with that Teething Whelp could put Beard Broken under a lot of pressure quickly. Ah, I Unfortunately, Hailstorm, a powerful card, but not doing anything for Akane right now, since they're the one that's in the lead. Ooh, and Beard Broken gets that Spire Shadows. That's one of the big things about their deck. They have all of the really big, powerful cards to work with that. Things like Crown Watch Press Gang to find one-drop units. Uh, Lightning Sprite, which is going to cost one. Highland, High Wind Glider. Minotaur Ambassador. Mystic Ascendant. Marison the Eldest. 
Colony Matron. So it just depends on what Beard Broken is going to top deck from here on out. And Akane going for the resurface. I'm not sure exactly what they decide to grab here. Looking at options for what they might have gone for. It's certainly possible they just went for Mortar. Maybe a Crystallize. Wow, Beard Broken immediately top decks a Bulbous Humbug. Just a fantastic draw from them. You're in the wow, and they had Crown Watch Press Gang in hand. Ooh. That is a scary, scary hand right after being able to play that sh Spire Shadows. What a top deck. And with that Crown Watch. I mean, shoot down the Bulbous Humbug. The problem is, though... Beardbroken went for another one cost unit, and what's one cost units in Beardbroken's deck now are incredible. Things like Colony Matron, which is going to be a one cost 5 5 flyer. Highwind Glider, same thing. So I'm imagining that uh, Beardbroken probably got the Colony Matron here, and I don't know what Akane can do against that exactly. <laughs> They're going to try and race, which I think is the smart thing to do. And maybe try and force that train. Ooh, Marison comes down. Oh, an Archive Curator. That's a smart play by Beardbroken, stopping some of the flyers. And then immediately getting a 2-2 off the of Marison. Wow, they had Marison, Crowwatch Press Gang in hand for that Spire Shadows. And then immediately top decked a ball with Humbug. What an incredible draw from Beard Broken. And I mean, Transpose will get Beard Broken if they go for the double block. And Beard's definitely thinking about it. Doesn't fall for it. Ooh, a post? I... Uh, I am not... Oh, yeah, no, sorry, Transpose can't do anything about that. Sorry, it's only the enemy player. The stone's I don't know how much I like that post-combat hailstorm from Akane. It doesn't get rid of the biggest threat is the problem. That Marison is really an issue. And now Beard Broken. Just kind of going to town here. Pawn grabbing resurface. They might find a way to burn Beard Broken out. It's certainly possible. I do think Akane should have waited a minute before using that transpose. Not to hope for like the mastery from Ace Donis necessarily. Oh wow. But yeah, to give. Like, you don't want to give Beardbroken any extra information. And Beardbroken had that invoke sitting there. So then they know what your plan is. And yeah, Marison has just taken over this game. No, your enemy. That'll help stop it now, but it's also a little bit too late. In fact, that should be lethal, right? 3-6. That is exactly lethal on board, so Beardbroken has the game. And we can argue that, like, that attack was a little bit off. Um, obviously, like, the Hailstorm. Wow, and that is more than enough damage now. Like, we can talk about how getting that 5-5 five, five killed was a real big problem. But realistically, having the 5-5 five, five in a round afterwards wouldn't have made much of a difference at all, if any. Uh, there's not a lot that Akane could have done once Marison came down. That was just an insane hand by Beardbroken. Beardbroken's deck just doing some incredible draws. We have seen Marison and one drop five fives over and over and over and over out of it. In incredible consistency. 
And yeah, I mean, it's just a scary, scary deck. It looks like such a pile. It's so many different colors, so many different weird cards, but it has shown that it's very consistent from what we've seen. And maybe that's luck, but maybe it's deck building. Beard Broken is very good, and wow. Some incredible draws there for sure. We're gonna watch from Beard Broken's side this time. And gotta remind you, everybody, Beard Broken has not lost the game with this deck. <laughs> Still. Five color Nikto and totally undefeated. Beard Broken is a very scary player and a very scary deck builder. And it has very much shown. I mean, again, a pretty consistent opening here. Missing on Shadow, but that's it. And none of the cards in hand are Shadow, so... Beard Broken with a nice start. A little bit of removal, some card draw. The Annihilate's awkward, but Beard's got some time to do things. I expect they're just going to look for power here. It's possible to play the Friendly Wisp, but it doesn't seem necessary yet. They're not going to be able to draw the cards off of it in a little while. Strategize is a great top deck here. Wow, into a find the way. Like, every time that I, I look at this deck and I think, man, how is this working? It just, it draws so well. Everything seems to click together like a nice little jigsaw puzzle. Because find the way can now find the shadow. Step aside, gonna have an annihilate up. Ooh, that. So, I mean, I'm guessing that you're gonna have to ice bolt there. Since Annihilate and Find the Way would mean that it's depleted. Pulled up Annihilate for later. Does give Akane a little bit more power, which you don't necessarily want to do. So Beard's going to think about this for a moment. I mean, Beard Broken could also go to the market with Great Valley Smuggler. Grab the Spire's Shadows. That doesn't seem like the right way to do that, though. Yeah, so we're going to see that Ice Bolt held up. As we suspected. Beard Broken is a really methodical player, though. So there'll be times when it seems like the line is obvious, but Beard Broken will walk through it a few times. Because Beard Broken, I mean, this is part of the reason why Beard Broken hasn't lost the game. Beard Broken has the patience to think outside the box and spend a little bit of extra time thinking about lines. The rebellion lives on. Something gets your eye. Now Kane going into the market with Genev. And that could be resurface, it could be provoke the dragons, Phoenix Stone. There's also an unexpected results. And Draconic Ire, but I can't imagine that either of those are the picks. Safe travels, friend. And just all of this power searching for Beard. Really letting this draw be consistent. <laughs> got some cool things to do right now. And now we've got Strange Tracker. The player plays a stranger, goes berserk, and three to exhaust and draw a dragon of your choice from your deck that you haven't played. Which is obviously very Fresh strong considering that Akane's deck is full of singleton dragons. But here comes that Spire Shadows. And now it's just up to how well Beard Broken top decks. We saw last time, Beard Broken top decks pretty well. It also helps. Beard Broken saved this Honor of Claws specifically for once they got the Spire Shadows down. And I'm thinking that Beard Broken's gonna try and do a block here.
I'm guessing that Akane has a trick. We know that Akane had in the market like, Provoke the Dragons, but no, that's... That's a slow spell. So Provoke the da Dragons is a two-cost deal two damage your dragon go berserk. But that is slow. So yeah, I think the Beard Broken's gonna risk it. And there's Conflagrade. So it'll get Beard Broken, but... I feel like if I'm Beard Broken, I wouldn't necessarily be too upset about that yet. The bigger problem was the Ace Donis, honestly. And Beard's gonna go for the draw, hoping to hit one of those really powerful units off of Spire Shadows, and instead, not able to top deck as well as last time, nothing. Uh, now can just play a Ebendune Smuggler for the ambush. Go for a Shenra Speaks, I'm guessing. And there's Provoke the Dragons. Econate is going for maximum damage here. The fruits of paradise. And I mean, Beard Broken is taking eight damage right now. So going down to six. And if Akane has cards in their hand that burn, could be the end of the game already. Well, we see a pass, so Beard Broken gets at least a little bit of a reprieve. And they've got that Shenra. It's gonna be real tight. Now the question is, does Beard Broken hold up Annihilate or do they play Devotee? I'm going to guess that we see an Annihilate held up. It's a really tight moment because that High Wind Glider off the top is a huge swing. Ooh, but Akane with the torch off the... Out of the hand and into the Dome of Beard to take the game. And we finally have Beard Broken dropping a single game. Beard's first loss of the tournament coming in round three. And we're going to go back to watching Akane and see if they can take down Beard. One of our top three consistents from the last tournament that we had as well. Beard just always puts up very consistent uh, numbers for sure. And our players are going to take a brief respite here. Look over their lists. Look over their opponent's lists. Maybe take a breather. Get a drink of water. And now we're ready to go. Alright, we are going to watch from Akane. And see if they finally put Beard Broken in the loser's bracket. A really nice start here from Akane. Not gonna pledge away that tattoo dragon, I imagine. They could definitely use like a two or a three drop unit, but Edict of Shavka is a certainly an acceptable early play as well. Oof. Yeah, this hand, unfortunately, just not turning out as well for Akane as they had like. Yeah, and now here comes the unit that would be able to be killed by Edict, but now Akane has their entire hand on four drops. Thinking Brutal Frostlord kills that. Seems like a good pickup. But we know that Beard Broken's got that Spire Shadows, that's always been their play, and I don't imagine it changes now. And the real question is, how much good card draw and how many uh, good top deck can Beard have right after the Spire? A really early Spire Shadows is very scary. We've seen how powerful it is in Beard Broken's deck. This is great though. Ooh, I was expecting Akane to play Tattoo Dragon into Emblem. I guess 
maybe just a tattoo dragon? Yep. Tattoo dragon into emblem would have immediately drawn another card. Gotten some value there. Yep, and Beard top decks the Bulbous Humbug with the bonus. Kane can definitely just kill it though. Ooh, equivocating the Tattoo Dragon. A little bit of punishment for not getting that emblem down. And now Momentum Builder is what it changes to, which is not going to help Akane a lot. But they do have eight, uh, seven damage coming in as flying damage here. So that is quite the clock. Not to mention, if Beard doesn't stop Ace Donis, copying Mortar is absolutely the game. God, Beard with Honor of Claws again, though. Knowing that Spire Shadows, that's such a terrifying hit. There's so many things that Beard can get that are so undercosted and so powerful. But Beard digging with a Strategize. If you're a Kana, you've got to be really, really excited to see that. Now Beard doesn't do anything for another turn. You're within striking distance. Beard's at three life effectively with that mortar. Ixton Merchant. That can go for a resurface. It can go for the Provoke the Dragons. That's almost lethal. It's so close. I mean, it is going to mean... Oh, not for Provoke, going for the Phoenix Stone? Oh, wow. Provoke the Dragons would have been another 7 damage. And the 2 from the Provoke. And it would have also given the Mastery to Estonis to give Mortar extra copies, right? So Beer Broken gets a little bit of luck here. But I don't think it's enough. Kane with Mortar Lethal for sure with any of these flyers. And now just straight up lethal between Torch and Mortar right now. Oh, Provokes Primal. Yeah, couldn't get the Provoke off the explosion. For some reason I was thinking it was the Howling Peak. And it could get anything. That'll be more than enough to put this match away now. And Beard Broken falls to losers as Nyctitraxian dies to its dragon brethren. Ace Donis going on. Really good games, really well played by both players for sure. Better played than I was because I was looking to that provoke. Beard taking the early lead in that match and then Akane just rolling two games with some really good burn spells. And... Beardbroken is not out. Beardbroken just gets knocked down to loser's bracket. And Akane Kiryu gets to go to winner's semifinals. And faces off against the winner of our next match, which is Grandmaster's Son versus Arzu. The loser of that can go to the other side of the loser's bracket. And face off against... Some of one of these eight players, or six players, sorry. Fish Spider, Crazy Renato, Celtic Guardian, Alesha, Yan Batari, and Zendikon. But yeah, Conic Hiryu's much more streamlined two color deck. Just able to finally take down Beard Broken's really greedy value pile in the five factor.